This is the 5 minute guide to the town class, light cruisers of the British Royal Navy. The town class were a series of Royal Navy light cruisers built in the 1930s under the terms of the London Naval Treaty. These terms defined light cruisers as having a main armament no greater than 6.1 inches or 155 millimetres in calibre. A 10,000 ton displacement limit for cruisers had already been agreed at the Washington Naval Treaty. Unlike heavy cruisers, whose numbers as well as overall displacement allocation were limited, there were no numerical limitations on light cruiser numbers. But total tonnage limits were agreed. 143,500 tonnes for the US, 192,200 tonnes for the British, and 100,450 tonnes for the Japanese. All three major naval powers had identified a potential loophole in these restrictions, which was that on a displacement of 10,000 tonnes it wasn't really possible to build a heavy cruiser with a substantial 8-inch armament and a truly suitable armour belt. It was therefore conceivable that a light cruiser, with sufficient numbers of lighter, faster-firing guns, could overwhelm a heavy cruiser. This led to the development of the Brooklyn and Megami classes in America and Japan. Ostensibly, these ships were built right up to the 10,000 ton displacement limit, with varying degrees of actual compliance, and armed with 15 6-inch guns in five triple turrets. The Admiralty meanwhile needed a response, but they also needed to account for the fact that the British Empire had a far wider commitment radius and therefore needed significantly more ships spread out over the globe. This had been seen earlier with the Leander and the even smaller Arethusa class of cruisers. Therefore, the town class as designed was supposed to be of a 9,000 ton displacement and mount 12 6-inch guns. Whilst each individual ship may have less firepower, it was hoped that the theoretical total of 21 ships that Britain could therefore build with this displacement would be able to cope in part via numerical superiority with the 14 American or 10 Japanese ships that would result from those nations sticking to their displacement limits with 10,000 ton designs. The main battery therefore consisted of 12 6-inch guns in four triple turrets, a pair super firing forward and a pair super firing aft. The secondary battery would consist of eight dual-purpose 4-inch guns in four twin mounts, with eight 40mm pom-pom guns in two quad mounts, and eight 50 caliber machine guns making up the anti-aircraft battery. Six torpedo tubes in a pair of triple launchers, one at each side, rounded out the armament. This actually gave the towns the greatest starting anti-aircraft battery of the three nations' designs, but the least offensive firepower, not including torpedoes. The main guns were originally supposed to also be dual-purpose AA guns, but as it turned out, the guns could not be trained or manually loaded quickly enough for continuous anti-aircraft fire, so instead a system was developed where the main battery could be loaded with time-fused shells and then fired when the target aircraft reached a set range. Of course, the anti-aircraft armament on all these ships would be substantially upgraded during World War II. The ships would be built in three distinct subclasses. The Southamptons, consisting of the Southampton, Newcastle, Sheffield, Glasgow and Birmingham. The Gloucesters, consisting of the Gloucester, Liverpool and Manchester, and the Edinburghs, consisting of Edinburgh and Belfast. The differences between the first two subclasses were minimal, with the Gloucesters having a redesigned deck armour scheme and slightly thicker turret armour. However, the Edinburghs were substantially revised. After further evaluation of the American and Japanese ships had been done, a 10,000 ton revised design was prepared to match the main batteries of these ships. However, the British Admiralty then rejected a similar five triple turret layout, so an alternate design with four quadruple turrets for a total of 16 main guns was prepared. Unfortunately, whilst this was a good idea on paper, it couldn't be made to work in practice, and so a revised triple turret design was adopted, with improvements resulting in a higher rate of fire for the 12-gun battery. Additional 4-inch and 40mm anti-aircraft guns were also added to the ship, improving the ship's AA defences further still. The ships would prove remarkably successful in service. Despite being heavily engaged throughout the war, only two of the class would be lost to air attack, both Southampton and Gloucester, 
being lost in the cauldron of the Mediterranean. Edinburgh and Manchester would also be lost to torpedo attack from submarines and motor torpedo boats, respectively. The ships would take part in a number of notable actions during World War II, with various ships of the class taking part in the Hunt for the Bismarck, the Battle of the Barents Sea, and the sinking of the Scharnhorst, along with a number of actions against the Italian Navy. Surviving ships were modernised after the war with some or all of the following, enclosed bridges, new lattice masts, improved surface fire control and long-range radar, better anti-aircraft fire control, and a uniform light anti-aircraft armament of 40mm Bofors, replacing the inevitable proliferation of pom-poms and 20mm added during the war. These ships would gradually be decommissioned and scrapped at the end of the 1950s and into the 1960s, with HMS Belfast being preserved as a museum ship, currently moored in London on the River Thames. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.